Yes, uh, children's books. Forgive me, Mrs. Muir, but uh, I am Uncle Neddy. Uncle Neddy? Ridiculous, isn't it? Why, you're adored by half the children in the world. Oh, I loathe the little monsters. My little girl is not a monster. I shall make an exception, then. I look forward to meeting her, Mrs. Muir. Uh, your husband also. My husband is dead. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, what a liar I am. I'm not sorry at all. As a matter of fact, I'm... Uh, well, uh, uh, your book. Tell me about your book. <laughs> Uncle Nady. Ah, uh, by God, we were a load of bells. Daniel, so you've been eavesdropping. I thought he said he had to catch a train, too. I rather think he only wanted to ride to the station with me. The way he was smirking at you, like a cat at a fishmonger. I found him rather charming. Rather charming. Now you're starting to talk like him. Well, how in blue blazes you want me to talk? Has better. I think you're being extremely childish. You should have pushed him out of the cab. In another minute, I would have. Daniel, why, I believe you're jealous. Well, of course I'm not jealous. <laughs> Jealousy is a disease of the flesh. I haven't had any flesh for years. I've never known you to be more disagreeable. And today, of all days... Yes, Prowse bought the book. Yes, and now I can buy the house just as we planned. I'm not so sure I want you to have the house after all. I wish you'd stop this sulking. You said yourself that I... Uh, that I should see men. Yes, I said men. Not a perfumed pencil pusher. Anyway, I... I shall never see him again. Well, that's what you think. Where are you going? I'm disappearing. Always hated trains anyway. I'll see you later, madam. Martha! Martha, where's Anna? She's in the orchard with Uncle Neddy. But I didn't expect him till tea time. Every day this week he's called. I can't be rude to him, Martha. I can. <laughs> he's out there painting a picture. How exciting. Whenever you're ready, we'll have tea in the garden. Yes, ma'am. I like your little girl, Lucy. She's very wise. For instance, how did she ever guess I wanted to be alone with you? If you bribed her to go uh, away... Aren't you interested in what I was painting before? You're quite accomplished, aren't you? I should think being Uncle Nettie would satisfy anyone. No, I also paint. Uh, under the name of Renoir. <laughs> oh, you're such a fool, Miles. <laughs> you know, that's quite the nicest thing you've ever said to me. And what, if anything, do you do as Miles Fairley? Specifically... I behave quite idiotically towards a young lady that I fell in love with in a publisher's office. Miles, please. Lucy, am I being unforgivably offensive? It's just that I'm... Well, I, I... I don't quite know what to say. Then say nothing. Take a look at this canvas. Why? It's me. You've been painting me in my... in my bathing costume. Mm-hmm. Every morning I've watched you and Anna on the beach. Not too bad, is it? It's very flattering, really. Oh, Lucy, darling, it would take a thousand Renoirs to... Oh, Lucy. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have kissed me. Well, that was unforgivable, wasn't it? But I shall not go away, even if you send me. And I shall see you again, even though you forbid it. I'm sure I... I have no control over where you go or what you do. Then you won't forbid it. Miles, please. If you do want to see me, go away now. Yes, Lucy. If you want it, my darling. Ah, no wonder you wanted to plant a rose garden here. Daniel. Perfect setting to be kissed in. Oh, you've been spying on me again. No, merely happened to be haunting the vicinity. Why did you let him... I didn't. He, he took me unaware. Ah, now, when a woman is kissed, it's because she wishes to be kissed. That's nothing but masculine conceit. Well, now what happens? Miles Fairley is staying at the inn in the village as well you know. He'll either remain there or go away. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I think it matters more than you'll admit. Well, then why bother to ask me? You seem to know my mind better than I do. Ah, he puts brilliantine on his hair. Most men do. You can find an excuse for everything. Only because you're attacking him. I know, I know. It's a natural human reaction. Oh, I wish you wouldn't be so superior just because you're not alive. And he is. Yes, very much so. It's no crime to be alive. No. No, my dear. No. Only sometimes it's a, a great inconvenience. The living can be hurt. I don't intend to be hurt. But if I'm to go about in the world as you said... It... Well, it will mean taking risks. 
And real happiness is worth almost any risk. Well, watch your soundings, Lucia. I will, Daniel. I only wish you... You alone in the garden, room? Oh, have some tea, Martha. But that's odd now. I swear I heard you talking. Is Uncle Nettie still about? No, he's gone. Mum, it's none of my business. But what's he up to? I rather think he's going to ask me to marry him. And you'd be willing to. I might. Why shouldn't I? Because he ain't good enough for you. That's why not. He's the kind of man no decent woman would associate with. Martha! I've got a right to the feelings, Mum, and I've got a feeling about him. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I've been so worried about you lately, Mum. Don't worry, Martha. I know he isn't perfect, but... But he's real. Real? I thought I was impervious to emotion, but I'm not. I need companionship and laughter and... And all the things a woman needs. Well, I hope he can give them to you. I, I'll go fetch Anna, Mum. Excuse me. Well, Daniel? Haven't you anything to say? Oh. <laughs> the sea in the moonlight, Lucy. And the warm summer night. I could stay here forever, my darling. I've never felt like this before, Miles. Hmm. How do you feel? I don't know. Like looking down from high up. All dizzy and, and unsure. You won't fall. I'll hold you. It isn't right. It can't be to feel like this. It is right. Because you're happy. I should go back to the house. It's, it's Anna's bedtime. Oh, just this one night. Can't you pretend you've forgotten? Miles, what's wrong, darling? I'm jealous. Of a little girl. She's my daughter. I can't forget her. When you're with me, I want you to forget everyone else in the whole world. You're a magician. You make it seem all wrong to consider my duty. And only right that I... That I put my arms around you to be kissed. To be loved. Lucia, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Asleep, huh? I thought you were one woman with sense. But you're like all the rest of them. Lucia, wake up. I'm talking to you. Blast it all, I said it. But... Uh, no, sleep on, Lucia. Sleep. I should have known. You've made your choice, the only choice you could make. You've chosen life, and that is as it should be. Whatever the reckoning. That's why I must go away. I can't help you now. Lucia, listen to me. Listen, my dear. You've been dreaming. Even now, you are dreaming. Dreaming of a sea captain that haunted this house. Of talks you've had with him. Even a book you both wrote together. But you, you wrote the book, Lucia. You and no one else. A book you imagined from this house and from that portrait on the wall. Now, it's been a dream in the years to come, you'll remember it only as a dream. And it will die, as all dreams die, at waking. Ah, ah, but how you would have loved the North Cape and the fjords in the midnight sun, where the blue water rushes into green, the Falklands, where a southerly gale whips the whole sea white as snow. Ah, what we both have missed, Lucia, what we both have missed. Goodbye, Lucia. Goodbye, my darling. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Before we bring you Act Three of The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, I want to introduce a delightful young lady whom 20th Century Fox has recently added to his roster of young talent, Miss Jane Nye. In fact, Jane is so photogenic that a portrait of her won her a screen test. 
Have you met any of the top-ranking stars yet, Jane? Yes, Joan Crawford. I met her the first day she started work on Daisy Kenyon. Oh, that's the picture Joan was keen to play in from the moment she read the book. And she was wonderful in the love scenes of Dana Andrews. Yeah, Joan knows how to get dramatic value out of a scene, too. Like the later scenes in Daisy Kenyon, when she's married to Henry Fonda. And she always looks so lovely. I was on the set one day when a stand-in was posing in some lovely lingerie similar to Joan's costume. Yeah, less delicate versions, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, but even these were lovely. I could hardly believe it when the stand-in told me they had already been luxed a number of times. And that Joan's even lovelier things get luxed, too. But John Kennedy ought to be interested in that. I am, Jane, but it's not surprising. Leading Hollywood studios specify gentle lux care for everything washable because it's so safe. Well, I've been a lux fan for years myself. As a matter of fact, Jane, luxed under things stay lovely three times as long. A scientific laboratory took a number of identical slips and nighties and washed them two ways. One set with a strong soap, the others the luxe way. It wasn't long before those washed with strong soap looked faded and drab, but the luxed ones stayed lovely three times as long. Well, that's a big help to any girl's budget. Right. And that means you can have three times as many pretty undies without spending any more. Because instead of just replacing worn-out, faded ones, you can buy extra undies and have three times as many. Thank you, Jane Nye, for being here tonight. Back now to our producer, William Keeley. Act three of The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, with Charles Boyer as Captain Gregg and Madeline Carroll as Lucy. <laughs> The coming of Miles Fairley into the life of Lucy Muir has marked the passing of the ghost of Captain Gregg. But Lucy scarcely noticed his disappearance in her love for her handsome suitor and the excitement over the success of a book called Blood and Swash. Imagine it, Martha. A check for 200 pounds from Mr. Sproul. Another 200 pounds for that awful book? Lummy, Mum, such language. And Mr. Sproul wants me to go to London immediately. Some more papers to sign. Off to town you go, Mum. Don't you worry about Anne and me. But I can't possibly go to London. Mr. Fairley's is coming. We're having a picnic. You mean he is? I heard you, Martha. Please remember that I'm going to marry him. Yes, Mum. By the way, I... I've been thinking... We might put that portrait of Captain Gregg up in the attic. Don't you like it anymore? Oh, it was so silly of me to hang it here in my bedroom. I, I don't know what possessed me. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I most forgot. Here, boy brought this note for you from the village. Oh? From the bank, is it, ma'am? No, no, it's from Mr. Fairley. Oh. Oh, how dreadful. He's been called up to London for a few days. But it's not dreadful at all. I'll go to London, too. I'll see Mr. Sproul as he wishes, and I'll see Miles. I'll surprise him, Martha. Quickly now, fetch Anna. I'm going to say goodbye to her. Yes, ma'am? I'd like to see Mr. Fairley, please. I'm Mrs. Muir. Thank you, ma'am. If you'll wait in there, please. Who's that, Hilda? Uh, Mrs. Muir, ma'am. Oh? Perhaps I can help you, Mrs. Muir. Did I hear you say you wanted to see my husband? If you don't mind waiting, he'll be back soon. I see. Won't you sit down? No, I... I'd better go. I, I'm afraid I've made a mistake. Mistake, Mrs. Muir? Yes, I, I'm very sorry. I think I understand, my dear. I'm sorry, too. Truly, I am. You see, it isn't the first time something like this has happened. <laughs> Now, Mum, you've all but cried your eyes out. Get home now, where you belong. Oh, Father, what a fool. What a fool. There, there. He ain't worth it. Blast his eyes, he ain't worth it. Martha, do you know what day this is? Hmm, wash day. Yes, but it was exactly a year ago that we came here. Do you remember that afternoon? I went upstairs and I lay down before tea. You're hidden for a cup of tea, Mum. No, Ma. I'm thinking of the dream I had that afternoon a year ago. Such a strange dream. Oh, well. Anna will be coming home from school soon, Mum. Will you be taking her for a walk along the beach? Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world. My little girl, Martha. She's all my life now. Mm, and most of mine, too. <laughs> soon there'll be no more walks. All too soon. She's growing up. 
school, then a university, young men, marriage. Oh, Martha, it will be honest before we know it. Before we know it.